Hello, I'm Charles Reed Anderson, and I head IDC Asia Pacific's Mobility and Internet of Things research. I'd like to welcome you to the first of our series of Internet of Things video briefings, and we hope to accomplish three main topics. In today's briefing, we're going to discuss the introduction to the Internet of Things. And what we're going to discuss is, number one, we're going to provide a definition of the Internet of Things. Number two, we're going to introduce you to the IoT solution ecosystem and the vendors that will be supporting it. And number three, we're going to explain the importance of the Internet of Things and what it's not only going to mean to businesses and the vendor community, but also to us as consumers. To begin, I think it's important that we start by providing IDC's definition of the Internet of Things. And not just the Internet of Things, but how machine-to-machine -machine technology will evolve into the Internet of Things, and that will evolve into the Internet of Everything. To start off, machine-to-machine -machine technologies have been around for nearly 30 years, and it involves a device that captures an event that's then transmitted over a network to an application and translates it into meaningful information. But those are just words. What I'm going to attempt to do is give you a scenario so you understand how this can actually be implemented in the real world. There's a shipping company in Hong Kong that ships potatoes on refrigerated containers from the US to Hong Kong. And what they have is a device that sits inside of their container that captures an event. And that event is the temperature, humidity level, and carbon dioxide level inside the container. And it transmits it to an application that can be read in the control room. And someone can see whether it's getting too warm in the container or there's too much moisture in the air. And they can send somebody out to that container and take actions to correct it. But that's still a bit inefficient because it involves us having to send somebody physically there. So what we want to see is machine to machine evolve into the Internet of Things. And RDC's definition is, it's a network of uniquely identifiable things that communicate without human interaction using IP connectivity. So in that same scenario on that shipping container, once you're already capturing the information and it goes into an intelligent system, that system should automatically know that it needs to open event or it needs to turn on the dehumidifier. So it can then initiate those next actions without having to rely on human interaction. And finally, Internet of Things will evolve into the Internet of Everything. And this is the bringing together of people, process, data, and things to make network connections more relevant by turning information into actions. Now that we've described what we mean by the Internet of Things, it's time to take a look at the ecosystem that actually supports it. And the ecosystem starts out with the modules that connect over a network through a platform and generate the information on that application. But what's happening between those different devices is that you're actually having a bunch of information transmitted back and forth, and we're capturing that information. But what's going to be growing and what's really going to drive the Internet of Things is the development of the intelligence systems by leveraging that analytics and initiating those next actions. Now all of these components need to be secured and then you need a vendor who can come in and pull together the multiple products from multiple vendors that create that single Internet of Things solution. And those solutions then can be generated to benefit us as consumers or governments or enterprises as well. And this ecosystem is actually quite exciting and it's quite sizable already today in 2014. Currently, in Asia-Pacific, excluding Japan, the market size for the IoT ecosystem exceeds 600 billion U.S. dollars. And by 2020, that number is going to exceed 2.4 trillion. And now that we know that the market size is there, what does it actually mean and why does it matter? Well, for us as consumers, you're starting to see a lot of interesting solutions out there already. The consumer wearables like the fitness bands and smartwatches are capturing more information and starting to add more value to our everyday lives. You're seeing smart home solutions that change the way we manage our home, whether it's from monitoring electricity, our appliances, or our security. From a business perspective, IoT is going to create numerous opportunities, but also threats. Technology can be a great leveler. It'll allow people to come after your market or allow you to move into market adjacencies. But either way, it's going to change the way that we interact with our internal and external customers and with the vendors that sit into the value chain. Finally, what does it mean to the vendor community? Well, quite simply, the market opportunity is just too large to ignore. We look at ICT spend today and IOT spend in the future, and you see that it's starting to come together and it's going to generate a lot of opportunities. So it's important that you start carving out your relevance to the consumers and make them understand what you can deliver to them.
and how you can help them deliver this value in the future. So on that note, I'd like to thank you for your time. Please remember to check back to see our new IoT videos that will cover topics that include the impact of consumer wearables on enterprise IoT solutions, as well as an analysis of the new and emerging Internet of Things business models. In the meantime, if you'd like more information about how IoT will change everything, please check out the IDC Asia-Pacific infographic site. Thank you very much for your time.